Hey, what's up guys? It's Emil Ayub, your realtor here in San Diego, and this video is for my renters. If you're a renter and you've been paying a landlord month after month after month, I'm sure you've wondered, is it actually better for you to rent or own your home? And how much of a difference does it actually make? Because I'm a realtor, you probably expect me to say that it is always better to buy. However, there is no blanket statement. I can't say yes for everybody. There's a lot of factors involved, and the only way to find out what's right for you is to analyze your specific situation. So I made this rent versus own calculator that I'm going to give to you for free that you're able to download. So if wherever you're watching this, there should be a link or a button somewhere where you can get it. If not, message me and I'll get it to you. And also want to just throw out there that I am not a licensed financial planner or CPA. This video and this spreadsheet and anything involved is just for educational purposes only. This does not constitute investment or tax advice and always consult with the appropriate professional before you do anything. Okay, cool. So we are going to be comparing two options. One is going to be Betty the buyer and the other is Randy the renter. Now, Betty and Randy, they both live in the same neighborhood. They have the exact same amount of money. Betty decides to buy a condo and then live in it for 10 years and then sell it. And Randy decides that he's going to rent instead. And the money that he could have used to purchase his condo, he's going to take that. He's going to put it in an investment account instead. So after 10 years, who has more money, Betty or Randy? Let's find out. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice is that this notice here on the top says only edit the yellow cells. So you'll see a lot of the cells are yellow. These are the assumptions that you're going to enter and then everything else auto calculates. So don't mess with any of the white cells, only edit what's yellow. So first we're going to look at the buying scenario. So we're going to put the assumptions in here. We'll say Betty the buyer purchases a condo for 450K, which is pretty close to the average price of a condo in San Diego today. And let's say she only has 5% to put down, her interest rate is 4.5% and she gets a conventional loan for 30 years. Property tax rate is about 1.2% and because it's a condo, let's say her insurance is 40 bucks a month, she gets it in pretty good condition so she doesn't really have to do any improvements to her first year. And because it's a condo, she doesn't really have to take care of the roof or the structure. We'll say repairs and maintenance and upkeep over time is going to be about 200 bucks a month. So we'll say HOA is 350 a month, pretty pretty average. And closing costs when she buys the property is going to be one and a half percent of the purchase price. When she sells it, she's going to have to pay closing costs and commissions. We'll call that seven percent total. And we'll say that the property is going to appreciate on average over time at about 5% per year, which isn't too crazy for San Diego. So you'll see a lot of the stuff down here has auto calculated, how much the down payment, the loan amount, her monthly mortgage payment, total payment. So we'll look at the renting scenario now. We'll say to rent a similar home for Randy the renter, that's similar to this $450,000 condo, it's gonna cost him 2,100 bucks a month. So security deposit is gonna be the same, and he's got to get renter's insurance for his protection. It's not very much, 20 bucks a month. And uh, we'll say the water is covered within the HOA and uh, the landlord's not going to pay the utilities, you are. So we'll say the rent increases at 2% per year. And for the money that's going to go in the investment account, let's say Randy's a pretty good investor and after taxes, he's able to net 6% on his money. Now that's after taxes. So other assumptions we're gonna look at, the general inflation is we'll say 2%. Um, we'll say their household incomes are the same. We'll say they make 75,000 per year. Um, so next thing you wanna look at is the effective in total income tax rate in state and local. If you don't know what to put here, you can look at your tax return for last year and there should be somewhere on there where it's calculated it. Or you can ask your CPA, I'm just going to throw in some numbers, we'll say 22% total and then 5% for state and local. We'll say income growth, they get a 3% raise per year, so they're doing better than inflation and we'll say that they're both single. Down here, there are the standard deductions for current tax year. This is what it is for 2019. If you are doing this in the future, just Google what it is for that year and you can update this and everything else will auto-calculate. 
And the reason for this is to figure out whether you're gonna have a tax savings from owning versus renting, and if there's gonna be a difference between you itemizing your property interest and tax deduction versus just taking the standard, right? Because if the standard deduction is higher, then you're not gonna get a benefit. But if by itemizing it's higher, then you wanna factor that in. All right, so we're gonna go down here and you'll see that all of these calculations have been automatically done. Just to go through it briefly, you'll see day zero. Got the property for 450,000. This is Betty the buyer. She got it. This is her mortgage amount. Down payment and closing costs, she needed 225. After one year, the value has appreciated. So you see here that it's gone up based on the 5% we put here. Loan balance gets paid down. And after one year, this is how much equity she has in the home. You see that it's over doubled after just one year. And over time, the property continues to appreciate. The loan balance continues to get paid down and her equity grows. So down here is going to be her expenses. You have the mortgage payment, property tax, property insurance, repairs, maintenance, HOA. And over time, these uh, some of these costs are going to increase based on the inflation rate we put in. Here is where it calculates the property tax and mortgage interest deduction, compares it against the standard deduction to see if there's a benefit and a tax savings. So you'll see that Betty the buyer, she actually has a benefit here of $12,296 that she can deduct on her tax return. And because of her tax rate, she actually saves $2,700 a year. Now it's $2,700 less that she has to pay in taxes now. So we want to factor that in. So when you calculate all this money that's coming out, plus this savings here, she gets a total cash outflow of the first year of a little under 36,000. All right, now we're gonna compare this to Randy the renter. We'll go down to the renting scenario, and we see we start here with the total cash outflow that Betty had, and we're gonna take out what Randy's gonna pay for security deposits, rent, renter's insurance, and then this is the difference that he has. We're gonna assume that Randy is super responsible and he's gonna take all that savings and he's actually gonna put all of it into an investment account and not go buy a fancier car or go to Vegas or go vacation. So he's gonna be very disciplined. And you can see here the 29,250, that's how much money he would have put towards a down payment and closing costs. That's what his investment account balance starts with. And every year that's gonna go up by the 6% that we said and it's gonna be added this difference is going to get added to it. So over time, you can see that it's constantly growing. So now we're going to compare. After 10 years, who comes out ahead? Is it Betty the buyer or Randy the renter? Let's find out. So we can see here the home value after 10 years is $733,000, which she bought 10 years prior for $450. After 10 years, the mortgage balance has gotten paid down at 342, so now she has $390,000 in equity. She, when she sells it, she's got to pay closing costs and commissions, and then net proceeds from the sale is going to be 339,000. Capital gains, got to pay taxes on it, so there's 327,000 in capital gains. However, 250,000 of that is exempt because it's her primary residence. So she doesn't have to pay taxes on $250,000 of gains. If she would have gotten married, that would go up to 500,000 and she would actually be exempt on all of it. But we'll assume she stayed single. Sorry, Betty. So her liability is 77,000 and we'll assume 15% capital gains tax. So she owes 11.6. So total. Net cash from the sale after paying taxes and everything of Betty owning her condo, selling it after 10 years, she ends up with $327,000. Randy the renter, who rented for 10 years and instead took all of the difference to invest it, and remember, it's all of it, ended up after 10 years with $177,000. That is a difference of boom, 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 boom. $162,000 net benefit of owning versus renting after 10 years. So Betty, they both started out living in the same neighborhood. One person bought for 10 years, one person rented. Now Betty, after 10 years, has almost double the amount of money that Randy had. So there are a lot of factors that go into this and minor tweaks in different assumptions can have a really big impact on what happens at the end.
So real fast, let's just play around with this. Let's say now we're comparing uh, the scenarios for a married couple. Let's say they buy a home that's more than they need, 700000 and they could rent something similar for, let's say, 3000 And we'll say that the properties don't appreciate as much, only appreciates 3% per year, and they're really good investors, so they're able to get 9% return on their money. So let's see what happened here at the end. Now, renting versus owning, it's pretty equal. They're actually come out $9,000 ahead in the renting scenario. But, you know, if property values actually appreciate 7% per year, now they're way ahead. So as you can see, little changes and tweaks in the assumptions can make a very big difference on the end result. Also keep in mind that this is just a simple comparison between renting for 10 years and owning for 10 years. Now, if you're a savvier person and you wanna focus on how can you actually improve your returns on the owning side and focus on how do you now generate income, there's so many other things you can do. You can purchase a home that has a granny flat that you can rent out. You can purchase a home and build a granny flat. You can look at two to four unit properties where you live in one unit and rent out the others and that still qualifies for a res residential mortgage. So if you have questions about that or you wanna discuss it further, contact me and I'm happy to do so. So. Get this calculator, plug in numbers that work for you, play around with it, see what you get. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to help. I give free consultations. If you know anybody that could benefit from this, share it with them. And just a couple other points here, you're gonna see that there's a couple tabs down here that you don't wanna mess with, don't touch those. Those are just to do calculations on the back end. So leave those alone. And any other questions, let me know. Take care.